Hello YouTube, in this hypertrophy series, I am going to draw back from a lot of the concepts I used before and I'm going to explain to you why training and moving weights is not the end all be all for muscle gains and that just repping, just pumping iron cannot be utilized as a, a global method to create hypertrophy because there are certain parameters that are going to ensure that you actually are going to gain size and others that are going to prove to you that the methods you're using are ineffective. And today I want to talk about the safeguards that are going to prevent you from reaching the muscular damage that is going to result in growth. You have for that to understand the principles of failure, organic and artificial, and the different types, so mechanical, muscular, etc. And also a certain understanding of intensity windows. So, let's get into it. What I want to talk about today is going to be rep ranges that are going to, to create what you think is muscular fatigue and muscular failure, but in reality is far from that. And that can be, for example, a set of 20. A lot of people like sets of 20. They like sets of 15, maybe even sets of 30. But I personally advocate against that. And the reason why is, on these sets, what stops you from continuing the reps is not muscular failure. It is something entirely different. It is a safeguard. And that safeguard is what I call mechanical failure. It's also artificial failure because what failed was not the muscle. What failed in this case was either the structure, so the body cannot maintain form, or there was a certain mechanism in the body that was triggered to stop you. And on this episode, we're going to talk about that because I already spoke about structural failure and mechanical failure. So in this case, the artificial failure is going to be something that is going to circumvent your ability to keep going, and yet you haven't dug your baseline to the ground yet, meaning that in reality you haven't damaged the muscle. And the best example I can give you for that is a pump. Grab an empty barbell, okay, and do reps with it. At some point you'll have to stop, and you'll have to stop because you'll get a pump, because the muscle is going to be painful. Did you reach an amount of reps that represents an intensity that, has, that is going to damage the baseline enough that now the muscle cannot go anymore? The answer across the board is no. Because if you compare the amount of weight you can rep on the curl and the amount of weight of reps that you did with an empty bar, it doesn't correlate. The intensity doesn't match. And that is a big problem because a lot of people don't get that when they calculate intensities. When you go into rep ranges that are too high, the, the equivalence stops functioning because you're trying to compare an exercise in three to five reps where what fails is the muscle to an exercise in 15 to 20 reps where what fails is the body. The muscle is being pumped full of lactic acid and it triggers a reaction in the muscle where you are being sent, your brain is receiving and sending at the same time signals telling it to stop because it perceives that the muscle is being gorged with lactic acid, but the muscle in itself is not tired yet. There is a mechanism that is telling you it's tired, but it's not the case. And that is the reason why I highly encourage people to stay between 2 and 12 reps and to do only a very select amount of exercises that are going to be in the 15 rep range. Because if most of your training split is in the 10 to 15 reps, you are running against that issue again and again. The perfect proof I have of what I just said is this. When you do heavy squats, when you do three to five reps on the squat, do you get a pump? Do you ever get a pump? When you do bench, do you often get a pump? How bad is the pump? Have you ever gotten a pump that bad that, that had you stopped the movement? Compare the type of pump you can get with just a bend for the bench and for the chest compared to a press. You're going to get a better pump with the bend. And yet, which one gives the most hypertrophic benefits? The heavy movement with a barbell. So that shows you right there that there's a discrepancy and a big misunderstanding when it comes to the rep range and the sensation. Too many people confuse artificial failure with organic failure and they leave a ton of gains on the table because guess what? 
You can pump the muscle with as much lactic acid as you want. It's not going to result in growth. You can, st you can state or you can argue that it creates metabolic fatigue, and I'm not going to argue against that. But metabolic fatigue is not the main driver of hypertrophy. Fiber damage is. And therefore, you need to pay close attention to your rep sets and the amount of reps that are going to get you into intensity windows that are going to create relevant tonnage. And this little predicament that I just presented to you exists in different iterations. There is, there is a ton of examples I have for you, each that explain and prove a point that I push on the channel. And I'm going to go through all of them. And I think we're going to have a good time. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.